everything is sexist. Welcome back, everyone, to the series where I take relevant male issues that feminists won't go near with a 10-foot pole and talk about them to my audience of 9,000 strong. Hey, what's up? Now let's get into this week's topic. It is a doozy, my dudes. No. 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 <laughs> been warned. Let the demonetization process begin! Boy, 13, arrested, cuffed, and dragged from school over hashtag MeToo allegations. Now I realize I'm a bit late to the game on this. This probably should have been something that I covered like two weeks ago. I didn't see it until recently. However, there is about a month left in this fundraising campaign and I'll be damned if I let it go by unaddressed on this channel. Thank you, Quill, for posting it in the suggested section of the Discord server. In a scene from Hashtag Me Too meets the Crucible, four female students have accused an 8th grade boy of sexual assault after he refused to apologize for going against political correctness. The hell? 8th grade and already he's got a victim count higher than Brock Turner? On his way to rival that of Jeffrey Dahmer? Are you fucking serious now? Thank goodness we're getting them while they're young. I mean, honestly, you gotta teach them that raping is bad stuff at a young age, otherwise they will never get it. They won't get it. Not when they've seen people get their reputations ruined for mere accusations. Not when they've seen countless other people have their careers and educations ruined over mere accusations of such nature. And certainly not when convicted rapists in prison are reviled by their other convicted criminals as the worst of the worst. Below drug dealers, murderers, and thieves. Certainly not in those instances. We have to teach men that rape is wrong at an early age, because otherwise they won't get it. <sighs> just men, though, because everyone knows that women are just precious, angelic little creatures who can do no wrong. It started off an ordinary day for 8th grader Keith Bailey until he was summoned by administrators into the vice principal's office at a Colorado Springs, Colorado middle school. He was confused and shaken. Keith had never been in trouble at school before, save for one minor incident months ago when he made an inappropriate remark that a fellow student looked like a school shooter. This time, it was much more serious. You keep making your edgy jokes, man. Don't let them get you down, even if they try to ruin you. Don't let them win by shutting you up. For over two hours on Wednesday afternoon, alone in her office, the vice principal grilled Keith. He said they kept asking him the same things over and over. They were just intimidating him, asking him the same thing in different ways, asking what he did to these girls and why he did it to them. Why did you do it? What did you do? When did you do it? Keith's father, Dennis Bailey, says they were vague the whole time. They never asked anything specific. Only after the two-hour inquisition did the school phone Keith's parents to let them know he was being suspended. But before they did that, they called the police. By the time Keith's father showed up at the school, his son was being cuffed and put into the back of a police car as a crowd of students stood by, ogling the scene. The Baileys asked that I not publish the name of the school or the arresting officer. This is how you would seek to treat a child that has no fucking clue what's going on like a criminal? interrogating him without the supervision of his parents, calling the police on him before you've even notified his parents, having a 13 to 14 year old child cuffed and escorted into a police car at school for all his peers to see before his parents can even arrive on the scene. Do you know how terrifying it is to have the police show up at your school and to have it be for you whether or not you're the one in trouble or not? Having your parents and the police show up at school at such a young age is Terrifying, Jesus, and all because people made mere accusations of guilt? Are you kidding me? This is the time that we're living in, the world that we're living in, the thing that we have created. It's a monster, grotesque and ugly in nature, rearing its annoying ass head at any mere hint of accusation, at any mere smell of it. This is what it has come to. This is what happens when you let people think that they can use the system to ruin people that they don't like or agree with. But we're getting to that. We're getting to that. According to Keith and his family, it all started a week ago when Keith and his friends were sitting around his house thinking about online anonymity. Keith decided to change his Snapchat avatar into a black bit emoji character. One of his friends, a girl, immediately noticed and within minutes told him he needed to change it back. She said it was insensitive and racist for a white person to use a black character as an avatar. Oh fuck 
off with that digital blackface bullshit, why don't you? Keith, the stubborn as any 8th grader, laughed it off and said he wasn't going to change it. The next day at school, the girl, according to Keith, then started telling everyone he was racist. The harassment and accusations persisted for days. Other students began threatening to beat up Keith, saying they were going to jump him after school for being racist. Then the girl and three other female classmates took it to the next level. Appearing to take a page from the Feinstein Handbook on how to destroy your political enemies, they appeared before the Vines principal to accuse Keith of sexual harassment and assault stemming back to the summer. So a case of he said, she said. In this case, actually, it's he said, she said, she said, she said, she said, that resulted in a kid being taken away to the slammer to answer for his alleged crimes that were thus far unproved. And they tell me we live in a rape culture! Fuck that! Keith had been friends with two of the girls. They attended youth group together at their church. They hang out all the time. If he had been maliciously touching them since back in the summer, they wouldn't be going out of their way to walk by our house to go to school together. They go to youth group together. They carpool together. To any reasonable person, I'd think that these allegations would be obviously ridiculous, but apparently there aren't any reasonable people anymore, Dennis says. I'm <laughs> reading this article the second time, and <laughs> it's... I'm just as heated. I'm just as heated. And for good good reason. This is... This is an outrage! Full stop! And you can tell because my voice is getting higher! Sorry, let's, let's get back to this. Keith is an A and B student, plays football, takes advanced math classes, is well liked by his teacher, and loves attending church. One of the girls, according to Keith, identifies as a feminist. He's pretty scared. I was scared. He was crying when they arrested him. No shit! Of course he was! He's getting arrested! At school! He's 13, 14 years old! He fucking... This is... Ah! We've never been close to anything like this. We don't know anybody criminal. It's not something we even thought we'd have to deal with. Dennis32, who works as a plumber, says, I think the whole political climate is what's motivating this. Anytime you disagree with somebody, now you accuse them of sexual assault and automatically they're a victim and you're a monster. It's so highly publicized now, that's just the answer. You know, I actually, okay, I will say this. I'm so glad that they've taken control of the narrative in this instance before it can be blown out of proportion epically for all to see. Before the world knows that... I don't know, this little 13, 14 year old kid is, oh, supposedly, you know, a serial pervert or what, like, <sighs> I am relieved that they got in front of this before anything of that nature could happen because Lord only knows what happens when you don't get in front of a story like this. Holy fuck! Do you think that something is not offensive? Well, it's off to the gulag with you then, son. Sorry, I don't make the rules. We have to believe victims, even if it's their word against yours. Do you think that pineapple belongs on pizza, bitches? Well then, guess what? You're also a rapist. Yup, that's, that's the rules now. That's, that's how this goes. <laughs> Do you think that the Kami Manifesto is a hilarious work of wishful thinking? You absolute mad lad, you. Guess what? You're a registered sex offender now. After the arrest, Dennis stayed back at school while his son was taken to the police station to be fingerprinted and have his mugshot taken. But neither school administrators nor the police would tell Keith or his parents the exact nature of the allegations. What the fuck? This entire story pisses me off. Rightly so. Now, I've been covering college-level Title IX cases in this series for the most part, where the, the worst thing that ever happens to those guys was a suspension or expulsion from school on their permanent record. Something is put there about the nature of why it was that they were put on academic probation. Something, something is in, on their record, but it's not a criminal record. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that I'd be covering the arrest and processing of an eighth grader for something of this nature this level with this amount of evidence. Are you kidding me? Never in my wildest dreams, but it just proves how entirely naive I've been to think that children would be spared the ire of the hashtag MeToo movement. Silly fucking me. He was charged with unlawful sexual conduct and harassment, which comes with a maximum sentence of two years in a juvenile detention center. And the family must wait until a court date of October 27th to learn what exactly the girls claims Keith did to them. But a clue emerged the night before when one of the girls' parents phoned the Baileys. This kid's life hasn't even started yet, and it's already on the precipice of tipping over the fucking edge. God damn it. Now, if there's a doubt somehow in your mind as to the innocence of this kid, well then, 
Hold on to your cynicism because this next part really does a number on them almonds. Her mother gave us a call and said she just found out that Keith had been inappropriately touching her daughter and she just wanted to let us know. She said, I know Keith is a good kid. Maybe he just went down the wrong path. She obviously believed her daughter, but she said it happened at the football game last week. The problem with that is my wife was at the football game the whole time. My son was there with his girlfriend and my wife didn't want him unattended, so she had eyes on him the whole time. My wife tells this girl's mother, that's funny. I was there watching the whole time. He didn't leave my sight and he was nowhere near your daughter, Dennis recalls. He was hanging out with his girlfriend. He wasn't running around molesting other girls. The mother then changed the story saying it must have been a different football game. Of course. How silly. Perhaps my daughter who espouses without a doubt that she was molested by your son has simply given me the wrong date that it happened? <laughs> she must be confused. Some other weekend then that better fits my daughter's narrative. Hmm. The Baileys have met with a lawyer and started a legal defense fund for their son. After Keith's five-day school suspension is up, the school has the option to extend another five days or to expel Keith entirely. But after the humiliation Keith suffered, his parents are already looking to enroll him in a new school. The other students, they say, already assume he is guilty after watching him put in the back of a police car. The link to the legal defense fund is the first thing in the description down below. It blew my mind. My son is not even mature enough to have done anything like that maliciously. I don't think it's in his realm of mental capacity at this point in his life that they are demonizing him as some sort of malicious predator blows my mind. I don't even think his mind is capable of being predatory, Dennis says. The Crucible-like scenario has the Baileys reeling. We are all on edge. I'm furious, personally. I'm furious at these kids and at their parents for allowing them to do something like this. I'm furious at the school for not even seeming like they're giving him a chance to defend himself. And the way they tried to intimidate him, it really, it's, it seems really shady how they wouldn't call us until two hours after they started interrogating him, Dennis says. It really is shady. It really is. Now, I'm no lawyer. And yes, children aren't al al allowed, you know, full legal rights until they reach their majority. But even with that stipulation, children still have a right to due process. They still have a right to due process. You, <laughs> you know, that thing that people are opposed to because we need to believe victims, right, Riley? <laughs> people want substantiation behind a person's accusation of criminal behavior before we believe in said accusations. Is that too much to ask? I don't think so. But apparently it is. Saying something something is 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 is, is it do doesn't make it true. Saying something doesn't really just make it true because the magic fairy says it does. You need evidence, you need corroborating witnesses, a solid story for that matter to back it up. One that one that you're not changing, one that doesn't, you know, have wiggle wiggle room. This is textbook. This is standard. I, I can't believe this is a fucking point of contention between people. Oh fuck! The point here is that Riley and so, so many others are the reason why the hashtag MeToo movement and the hashtag Believe All Women and the hashtag Believe Survivors sentiments have gotten to such a level that an 8th grader child is now subject to the political rantings and ravings of utter lunatic herpes who are perfectly willing to throw the baby out with the bathwater for the sake of their narrative. This is a viral infection of a weapon that never should have been allowed to fester the way that it has. Absolutely not. Never. And yet here we are. And there's no end in sight. If you like what I'm doing here, feel free to check out the links in the description to my Amazon, my Patreon, and the Teespring store. If you maybe don't like me that much, it's totally fine. You can always like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also, don't forget to hit that bell so you can actually get notified because YouTube hates everyone and even if you hit that bell you might not get notified. So be sure to follow me on Twitter too in case, uh, because I do post the videos up there every single time I upload, just so everyone knows that they're up. Um, and then if you wanna maybe see more of me in a different, completely different capacity, not ranty Weibo mode, I do do an RPG-esque stream show every Monday night from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the God of Morskar's channel called SideQuest, and a bi-weekly stream about the news with segments for advice, call-ins, fanfiction read-throughs, and more Sundays and Wednesdays from 7.30 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on some dumb American's channel called Two Girls, One Stream. Links to both of their channels down in the description down below. Peace.